In addition to winning the 2017 Australian Open alongside her mother, Alexis Olympia Ohanian has been making big moves despite only being two as she is the youngest team owner in professional sports history. Olympia is listed as a part owner of the newest National Women's Soccer League team that is based in Los Angeles. The team is not yet officially named, but for now they call themselves Angel City. Obviously, Olympia's parents, Alexis and Serena, are responsible for this investment, and Alexis Sr. himself explained why he's giving his toddler such an ownership stake. As someone who spends hours kicking around a football with my two-year-old daughter, I want her to have a front row seat to this revolution, Ohanian wrote. I'm personally investing on behalf of my family because creating more opportunities in women's sports is important to my wife and me, and we want to be a part of making a better future for our daughter. This was really a good move by Alexis and Serena because it seems like a win-win decision. First, they're providing their daughter a great opportunity at attaining generational wealth. Moreover, this investment can help grow not only this new team, but women's soccer as a whole. Now in some not so positive news, American player Danielle Collins was let go from the World Team Tennis Championships in West Virginia after violating coronavirus protocols. World Team Tennis made the announcement in a statement that reads, We have dismissed Danielle Collins from the Orlando Storm for the remainder of the 2020 World Team Tennis season after breaking our COVID-19 protocols and leaving the Greenbrier Resort and the state of West Virginia. The protocols have been put in place and communicated numerous times to protect the health and safety of our players, coaches and staff, which are of utmost importance to World Team Tennis. Now, news of Collins' ban from World Team Tennis made a lot of headlines, mostly due to her hypocrisy. If some of you all remember, about a month and a half ago, Collins called out Novak Djokovic after the Serbian said it would be impossible to play the U.S. Open under the organizer's proposed COVID-19 protocols. It's easy when someone's made $150 million throughout their career to try and tell people what to do with their money and then turn down playing in the U.S. Opens, Collins has said. For those of us who don't travel with an entourage, we actually need to start working again. It would be nice to have the best player in the world supporting this opportunity and not spoiling it for the players and the fans. This is a serious contradiction to previous comments about having players inside the top 100 donate money to players outside of the top 250. No one has been able to play sanctioned events or make money since February. Here we have an awesome opportunity with the US Open talking about proceeding forward with the event with some strict safety precautions to make sure all players feel safe and their health is put first. This is a massive opportunity for players to start making money again and here we have the top player in the world saying only being able to bring one person with him would be too difficult to bring his entourage. As expected, fans were quick to call out Collins for her ignorance and contradiction, appropriately so should I say. She clearly couldn't take the heat as she deactivated all of her social media accounts. I personally don't think that's the way to go even though I'm sure this entire thing was embarrassing for her. She just needs to face the music, apologize, and accept the criticism. Rather than do this, she blamed much of the World Team Tennis event organizers. Collins told the New York Times, I don't feel I intentionally broke a rule, so I don't feel it affects what I said about the US Open. There is a waiver that I signed that was specific to the safety protocols and practices that are to take place during the World Team Tennis event, and it didn't have any mention of leaving the hotel. I don't really know how that worked if I wasn't able to leave and there's hundreds of guests staying at the hotel who weren't with the group. She says she had informed a World Team Tennis official about her intentions of traveling to Charlottesville, but also said the league official, whom she declined to name, had not informed her such a trip was forbidden. She also said she had left the Greenbrier earlier in the season to seek care for her dog. World Team Tennis staff were aware of that and didn't say I couldn't do that, she said. Collins said she had been going through a difficult time with her arthritis flaring up and her mother being hospitalized for a pre-existing medical condition. World Team Tennis Chief Executive Carlos Silva disputed Collins' claims, saying inquiries had not turned up any confirmation of a league official condoning Collins' trip to Charlottesville. 
He also said he found no evidence of players leaving the resort for outside meals, despite some concern. Silva denies that Collins was being held to a different standard. I would never do that, Silva said. It wouldn't be bright. It wouldn't be fair. I think also a surprise trip two hours away to a different state definitely raises your level of attention for sure. If she had made a mistake in going down the street to a pizza shop and really didn't know, I would have talked to her about it. But a surprise trip that was a two hour drive? This aside, the World Team Tennis season as a whole has been very successful both tennis and COVID wise as mid-season COVID testing of everybody involved in the event saw zero positive tests. Additionally, Kim Kleisters, who is gearing up for her latest comeback to professional tennis, has been undefeated in World Team Tennis singles and mixed doubles, taking out the likes of Sloane Stephens and Sonia Kennan. After looking at some of the highlights, I have to say that Kim looks a lot better than in February when she played Dubai and can definitely put up a fight for her fifth major. Exhibitions aside, as we're nearing the return of tennis, some uncertainties about the remainder of the summer hardcourt swing arise after the cancellation of the city open. The DC event was initially supposed to kick off the resumption of men's professional tennis on August 14th, but Chairman Mark Ein said concerns about international travel restrictions and recent trends in the virus led to the cancellation. When we committed to host the event, all the trends were going in our favor, and halfway through the process, they all reversed, Ein said by telephone on Tuesday. Then we ran out of time. With a little more time, we may have been able to overcome the obstacles that are in front of us, but it's better to make a decision for all the stakeholders before it gets to the last minute. This cancellation raised further questions and concerns about the U.S. Open, as people have been expressing their discontent with the tournament being held despite the high number of cases in the United States. Despite all this, the U.S. Open still plans on going ahead as scheduled releasing this statement. Though unfortunate, the USTA understands the rationale for canceling the City Open at this time. We want to commend Mark Ein and his entire team for their tenacity, driven by their passion for the sport, but respect the tournament's ultimate decision. We also want to thank the many supporters of the tournament from the fans to its many partners and know that Mark and his team will be ready to host them in 2021. This decision in no way impacts the US Open or the Western and Southern Open. The USTA will create a safe and controlled environment for players and everyone else involved in both tournaments that mitigates health risks that were approved by the state of New York and also conform to the standards put forth by New York City and the federal government. We constantly base our decisions regarding hosting these events and the best interest in the sport of tennis and whether this decision is financially viable. We are confident we remain with all three guiding principles. In all honesty, I have no clue whether the US Open will go ahead as scheduled because there is simply just a lot of uncertainties. It seems as if some big names are planning to skip the event as both Rafael Nadal and Stan Wawrinka are practicing on clay. Despite this, other events are scheduled to go ahead as a new WTA event in Kentucky, the top seed open, is set to begin on August 10th. This tournament so far has a lot of big names as major champions Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Sloane Stephens, and Victoria Azarenka are set to compete. Additionally, Coco Gauff, Amanda Anisimova, and Arna Sabalenka join the field of players. In Europe, a clay court tournament in Palermo, Italy will officially restart professional tennis on August 3rd. The Palermo Ladies Open is headlined by two-time major winner Simona Halep, who also intends on playing the Prague Open the following weekend. That's all for today's tennis news. Let me know your opinion on Olympia's stake. Also, how do you feel about Collins' hypocrisy and the return of tennis? Will the US Open be cancelled? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.